We all knew Dragon Age the Veil Guard was going to cause waves because on one hand you had Dragon Age fans who simply wanted a good, faithful continuation of the story they've previously fallen in love with, and then other people who wanted Bioware to focus on being a current day company, shoving identity politics in your face and doing a full-blown reboot. And now that the critic scores are finally out, it seems that critics and YouTubers have vastly different opinions and that this is definitely going to cause quite the drama on social media over the next couple of days. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, I think it is important to say I do not trust critics. I do not care if you are a critic who has been in the industry for 20 years. I find it extremely hard to trust people who are getting early access to games, who are being handed multiple opportunities by companies to see a product beforehand because it really just comes across as eh, they probably are going to say they like it in order to continue to stay on that company's good side and get review codes. But right now, the critics and YouTubers who have gotten early access and who have reviewed the game already are extremely divided. But one thing's for certain, this game does shove identity politics in your face. And from the bit we understand, it's even worse than we initially expected because we had heard, of course, there was going to be the top surgery scar toggle, which did um, upset a lot of people. Why do you need that in a Dragon Age game other than to, you know, virtue signal and pander to certain groups of people? But now we know that, of course, it can always get much, much worse because this is a Kotaku article. In Dragon Age the Veil Guard, this dialogue option lets you declare that your character is trans. The RPG goes beyond pronoun and gender options to let you solidify your hero's identity. There are multiple screenshots going around now where characters are confirming their identity, saying non-binary. I just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. <laughs> exactly what I expect in my dragon game. Am I right, chat? I mean, come on. How far are they always willing to push the limits? These companies are so out of touch with what people actually want. Then we have this. Take a long, hard look at it, kid. It'll always show the face of a hero who can get it done. And then it says, establishes transgender identity and unlocks new dialogue options in future conversations where you can say, I'm getting there. I love who I am. Feels real good. Good to see the real me or just going back. Now, I wish I could go back to the days of Bioware actually making good content for people, but that's just not the reality that we live in anymore. And oh boy, it continues to get worse because there are critics coming out saying it's basically a 10 out of 10. It's so amazing because of the inclusivity. Uh, this is from Manga Lawyer. The first review of Dragon Age The Veil Guard is in, approved by Metacritic. It's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece celebrated for its diversity. They talk about the positives, which is it's got a crazy cast of companions. The combat's punchy, satisfying, and tactical. Presentation is breathtaking taking from the stunning visuals to the high quality writing. And then one of their major pluses is inclusive in very thoughtful and wonderful ways. It's another shining testament to diversity and inclusivity polished to near perfection in its presentation. So these are the things that the mainstream is now praising this game for. But on the flip side, you actually do have quite a few reviewers and more specifically 
YouTubers and content creators who are saying this is not what they expected and it's a major disappointment. You do have, you know, VGC saying it has strong characters, but the gameplay is stuck in the past, giving it a three out of five. And then you have YouTubers like Skill Up and Mr. Matty Play saying, I do not recommend Dragon Age the Veil Guard. And Dragon Age the Veil Guard is a big disappointment. Now, I always expected its general scores to be be pretty good, and they are for certain. It's sitting currently at an 84, which is right around what I kind of expected. Um, but on the flip side, when you have such a clear divide already between the people who are saying it's mixed, it's not as good as they expected, and then the ones giving it 100% across the board, you're going to end up with in just a few days when players get their hands on it, it being the same way because we're not seeing really middling scores here. It's either a hundred percent or it's like a 50% and all the 100% do again, talk about how it's got a cast of endearing and quirky companions. I'm fine with having like one or two quirky companions in a game, but when that's like your main companion strategy is having all these characters that are basically just there for comedic timing. I personally don't like that constantly being shoved in my face. There's also one saying, you know, it's exactly what we needed after Inquisition. From the moment I stepped into the streets, it felt like coming home. I mean, I, I don't want to give any spoilers here, but they're basically saying that, yeah, I mean, it is fantastic. It's a 10 out of 10. That, to me, is very hard to sit here and believe unless they truly are just trying to give Bioware these, you know, rave reviews so they can stay on their PR list. And maybe in a few days when this comes out, my opinion will be the same. Maybe I'll think it's a 10 out of 10. Maybe I'll think it's absolutely amazing. But this to me has always screamed for a modern audience, right? That they're trying to make a Dragon Age for a new group of people. And in turn, that inherently means that older fans or nostalgic fans get kind of left on the sidelines, which to me, with these reviews, it certainly sounds that way. I mean, I do not think that this is going to be a particularly fantastic situation for Bioware. Seeing this divide, seeing outlets say it's a new entry that could have brought more to the table, but, you know, it's mediocre, it's only a 6 out of 10, and then you've got the shills saying, oh my god, it's a 100, best game I've ever played. And maybe in a few days, once the full launch rolls around and gamers have actually gotten their hands on this title, they'll say the same thing, that it is really fantastic, but so far, all I'm really seeing highlighted by the mainstream media is that it is diverse and that it is inclusive. And like I say all the time, I am perfectly fine with diversity and inclusivity as long as it is done naturally and it is not forced. And it seems that this team at Bioware did force these things into the game. I mean, again, they're having you go through your, you know, pronouns, your background, if you want to identify as trans or not. Uh, you have gender options. They want you to, quote, solidify your hero's identity. So over the next couple of days, I think the internet is going to be blowing up over Dragon Age of Valeguard, and I will continue to keep my eye on it. But for now, that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.